Russia's President Putin has endorsed Kim Jong-un's stance on North Korea's nuclear program. Putin says that Russia will support all efforts to resolve the nuclear standoff. And that is the big takeaway from the summit of the two heads of state in Vladivostok in Russia today. What does this mean? This means that Kim Jong-un will need security guarantees to abandon nuclear weapons. And listen to this again. The dictator of one country that poses a nuclear threat to the entire world needs security guarantees to stop producing those nuclear weapons. Besides being authoritarian leaders, there was more in common between Putin and Kim. They gave each other the same gift. Would you believe it? The same gift, a sword. Talk about being on the same page. Putin and Kim seem to be thinking along the same lines. Apart from gifting a sword to Kim, Putin also gave him an endorsement, an endorsement to Kim Jong-un, the person. Kim's getting a lot of those. Remember what Donald Trump said of him, a great leader, but earlier Donald Trump called him the rocket man. So that cancels. But Kim says that he traveled to Russia to meet Putin in person and exchange views. It's camaraderie 101 that played today. <laughs> Chomigan so what came out of the meeting, you may ask? Putin has endorsed Kim's attempts to normalize North Korea's relations with the U.S. This will be step number one to remove crippling sanctions on North Korea and establish peace in the Korean Peninsula. Reports say the two leaders also discussed the fate of 10,000 North Korean laborers who are working in Russia. They're due to leave by the end of this year because of sanctions. Now, labor is one of the major exports of North Korea. There aren't enough jobs in the country. It's one of the few routes in which North Korea gains access to foreign currency. Kim Jong-un has asked Russia to continue employing its workers. The other issue is more crucial. North Korea is struggling due to food shortage. Kim Jong-un has already raised this issue with the United Nations. Reports say that he sought a boost in aid from Moscow. Remember, Russia has provided $25 million in food aid to North Korea over the past few years. Putin has spoken highly of Kim, but Russia's trade with North Korea is minuscule. Last year, it was only $34 million, a drop in the ocean. But food aid could be Russia's bait to gain access to mineral resources in North Korea. So did the meeting yield the desired results? The answer is yes. For Kim Jong-un, it helps to have Putin's endorsement on sanctions, as well as Russia's support to tackle food shortages at home. But what is next? The Russian president has said that he will discuss the issue of North Korea with China tomorrow. He's going for the BRI summit. The meeting could also set the stage for another Trump-Kim summit. We'll have to wait and see. Now to one of the biggest breakthroughs for women in India's armed forces. The Indian Army has kick-started the process to induct women as Jawans in the military police. It's the first time that women will be recruited as Jawans in the Indian Army. This historic step comes as a much-awaited decision on inclusivity and empowerment. Here's a report.
the Indian Army made a historic move. It kick-started the process to induct women as Jawans in the force. In a first, the Indian Army started online registration for recruitment in the Corps of Military Police. The Army also put out a formal advertisement in newspapers. Applications from women are being sought at soldier or Jawan level for regular employment in the Army. The applications are for the recruitment of a hundred soldiers. This is the first time women will be inducted as soldiers in the force. Till now, women were being inducted only as officers into the army. The move comes three months after Defence Minister Nirmala Sitaraman had announced that women would be inducted into the force in the personal below officer rank or PBOR category. Starting now, women will be inducted in a graded manner to eventually comprise 20% of the total core of military police. The role of women Jawans would range from probing crime cases to assisting the army in field operations wherever required. According to government data, the army has 3.80% of its workforce as women, while the Air Force has about 13% and the Navy 6%. Currently, women are allowed only in select areas such as medical, legal, educational and engineering wings of the army. The recruitment of women as soldiers in the military police is the first step towards eventually allowing them in combat roles. This historic step of recruiting women soldiers comes as a much-awaited decision of inclusivity and empowerment. Bureau Report, we on World is One. More power to these women we say and with that we are wrapping up this edition of Gravitas, leaving you with Gravitas Images. Thanks for watching.